For how many years did Roman history last? What at first appears to be a quite simple question, as we all know that Rome supposedly fell in 476 AD, we shall hopefully find out during the course of this video that this question requires a much more elaborate answer than would be commonly believed. So let us then find out over how many years Roman history lasted, from its very beginnings during the founding of the city of Rome until the very end of the Eastern Roman Empire. The Romans were quite certain when their city was founded, on April 21st, 753 BC. This is the day of the festival to the goddess Pallas, goddess of shepherds, and it was believed that Rome was founded by the brothers Romulus and Remus on that day. However, of course, in reality, the date is quite less certain. The Greek historian Timaeus, for example, dates the founding of Rome to the first Olympiad, so to 814 or 813 BC. But most other historians give us a date very close to around 750 BC and archaeological evidence points to a series of fortification walls that must have existed in the middle of the 8th century BC on the northern slope of the Palatine Hill in Rome. So it appears that 753 BC could indeed be correct. This year is defined as the year 0 AUC, ab urbe condita, the calendar that counts the years from the founding of the Eternal City. We live in the year 2775 AUC. It could be argued that the area around the Palatine Hill had been inhabited since about 14,000 years ago, as confirmed by archaeological findings, but we can hardly call the humans who lived during those times in that area Romans. Thus, for lack of better evidence, let us confirm 753 BC as the year 0 ab urbe condita, so the year 0 AUC. The Romans then conquered over hundreds of years the surrounding people and by 200 BC they had become the dominant force in the Mediterranean. By 146 BC even Greece was conquered and by the birth of Christ 753 AUC Rome had truly become a vast empire. By 870 AUC, the empire had reached its largest extent, reaching from the Persian Gulf to the cold highlands of northern Britannia, a truly vast empire. In 1148 AUC, the empire split in two parts, and by 1229 AUC, the last Western Roman Emperor Romulus Augustus was deposed the year 476 of our calendar. And please like this video and subscribe and also turn on the bell so that you won't miss any future videos on the fascinating era of the late Roman Empire. And if you want to suggest video topics of your own, participate in polls, chat with other enthusiasts of the Roman Empire, or participate in exclusive live streams with me or our team, you can gain these perks by supporting our work on Patreon or via becoming a YouTube member. Thanks to your support, we will be able to explore many different topics of the late Roman Empire. Gratias a gutibi, amici. So does Roman history thus end after 1229 years? Of course not, because Julius Nepos was actually the rightful Roman Emperor. Romulus Augustus was not recognized by the Eastern Roman Emperor and was thus only a usurper. Nepos reigned from his realm in Dalmatia and he was assassinated in 480 AD or 1233 AUC. But wait, there was also the realm of Suagrius, son of Aegidius, still reigning over a remnant of the Western Roman Empire in Gallia, which is known as the famous Kingdom of Soissons. This empire persisted 10 years longer until 486 AD or 1239 AUC. But wait, there was also the Mauro Roman Kingdom, which actually withstood the Vandalic occupation of Africa and continued Roman style rule until 578 AD and even continued in some form until the conquests of the Umayyad Caliphate in the 8th century AD. 
But of course, we haven't even talked about the elephant in the room. Because the Roman Empire actually didn't fall in those times. Since the Eastern Roman Empire continued to exist for quite a few more centuries. No matter when we date the fall of the Western Empire, be it 476, 480, 486, or even after 536, when Justinian de facto destroyed everything that was left of the Western Roman Empire in the Gothic Wars, the Eastern Roman Empire continued until 1453 AD. This is 2206 years after the founding of Rome, so 2206 AUC. So that's it then, right? Roman history finally ends after 2206 years. But wait, what about the Empire of Trebizond? Indeed, this split away empire had formed in 1204 AD and would even last until after the fall of Constantinople, namely until 1461 AD. So that's it then, right? Nope. On the Crimean Peninsula, many who had fled the 1204 sack of Constantinople had arrived here and established the Principality of Theodoro. It fell only as late as 1475 AD. But now that's finally it, right? No. Because the despotate of Epirus, another split away remnant of the Eastern Roman Empire, lasted until 1479 AD or 2232 AUC. So there you have it. Technically, judging by held territory, Roman history lasted from the founding of Rome until the fall of the last Eastern Roman stronghold, the city of Munitza, of the despotate of Epirus, spanning an incredible 2,232 years. But technically, one could argue that there certainly were some small islands in the Aegean that were never conquered by the Turks, and thus technically still remain as last remnants of the Roman Empire. This is a hilarious thought, which I find extremely entertaining, even though it certainly is just a funny thought exercise. However, one could also argue that culturally, the Roman Empire exercised such a strong influence that Roman history still has not ended. The Renaissance, for example, was in great part initiated by scholars who fled the sack of Constantinople in 1453 AD, who brought with them ancient Greek and Roman knowledge from the libraries of Constantinople. Languages based on Latin are still being spoken today. The Roman alphabet still serves as the basis of many Western languages. The Catholic and Orthodox Christian Church still survive as remnants of the Roman Empire, dating back to the times of Constantine. One could argue that in the span of over 2000 years of Roman history, an immense cultural transformation took place. Even though the inhabitants of Constantinople in 1453 or of Vunitsa in 1479 of our calendar still called themselves Romans or Romaioi in Greek, they were already very different from the early Romans. Culturally, there was almost nothing in common, even though they would have both identified as Romans. And even more fascinatingly, you would find Greeks until very recently, especially in rural areas, who continued to refer to themselves as Romaioi or Rumaioi, even well into the 20th century. There's one particularly fascinating tale about this, told by Peter Karanis, a scholar of Byzantine history, who was born on the island of Lemnos in 1908. When this island was recaptured from the Ottoman Empire by Greece in 1912, Greek soldiers were sent to each village and stationed themselves in the public squares. Some of the island children ran to see what Greek soldiers looked like. What are you looking at? One of the soldiers asked. At Hellenes, the children replied. Are you not Hellenes yourselves? The soldier replied. No, we are Romans, the children said. There might be still people on some Greek islands keeping the Roman identity until this very day. 
Maybe even some of you, dear viewers, belong to that group. But also outside of Greece, that is the case. Greeks in Ukraine, for example, settled there as part of Catherine the Great's Greek plan in the 18th century. They maintain Roman identity, designating themselves as Rumayoi. And last but not least, the Romanians can claim that their country is the only remaining country in the world that contains the name of Rome. I can count myself to this funny group of people as I was born in this former province called Dacia. And maybe that is where this fascination for Rome comes from. The Romanians also call themselves Romani, which can also be translated as Romans. We can thus see how difficult it is to put an end to Roman history. Did it even end? Roman culture, architecture, language and many Roman inventions are still very alive today, which leads some people to argue that the Roman Empire never fell. So we can see that I cannot give a clear answer to how long Roman history actually lasted. Taking the fall of the last Byzantine stronghold, we could argue 2232 years, but we can also argue that Roman history is still ongoing as we speak. Let me know what you think. How long did Roman history last? I am looking forward to your comments. And if you are interested in how Rome must have looked some decades after the fall of the Western Empire, you can watch this video here in the upper right corner. But if you are more interested in comparing Rome and Constantinople, you can watch the other video in the lower right corner. I say thanks again to all friends of Roman history and to all who are like me absolutely fascinated by the late Roman Empire. Gratias amici Imperi Romani and Bene Vale.